Hi, my name is Terry. Welcome to Terry's Troop Tours. While our sanctuary may be empty as we are staying safer at home, that doesn't mean if I have a good reason for being here, like signing a check, since I am the treasurer for the board, that I can't spend a couple of extra minutes each visit and show you some parts of the church, some that are familiar and that you're longing to view, and maybe some unfamiliar ones you've never seen before. So, welcome. We're starting off with the position our video camera is in most Sundays that we're together in worship. And that's aiming at the pulpit and Chris's piano. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more where Reverend Tara, our pastor, normally gives us her sermon or our intern minister, Liz Murphy. But have you ever been behind the pulpit? Have you ever been up the steps to the chancel or the front of the church? Some of these words are from other church architecture and some are just the tradition that you guys have called them and so I am calling them that too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the video camera off the tripod and film as I go over there. And hopefully Brad Wallace will edit out all the bouncing. <laughs> or not. <laughs> So this is the north side of the sanctuary, and here's one of our stained glass windows. We were doing the parables when we got into lockdown, so we haven't got to this north side. I think that's next year, Tara said. And has anyone ever wondered at the front, the front of the sanctuary on the very north side, have you ever noticed there's a door? This is probably the very first thing I was nosy about <laughs> when I became a member and started doing little projects. Let me show you, it's not very exciting. <laughs> Behind the door, dun dun dun, is another door. And this one is padlocked. And there is also a fire extinguisher. We should all know that for, for should say, I bet we're supposed to mark that. <gasps> and also there is a, um, a handle from a cobweb wiper that appears to have lost his uh, fuzzy mop head. I'll have to look into that as well. But we aren't able to get back there. Rumor has it that's where the pipes of the steam organ are. It's a rumor. So facing south towards Chris Maldonado's piano and the last little bit uh, set up from the uh, the week prior to our safer at home COVID-19 response. But what I want to do is I want to take you up onto the onto the chancel or the pulpit and give you a look at the two areas on the north and the south. So here's your handrail. Hold on. It's going to one, two, three big steps. So if you've never come up to do uh, one of the the welcome. Uh, readings at the beginning. You can see we've got the mic stand ready and we were so ready for that Sunday. There's actually someone's script here. Let's see how close. What If by Lutheran pastor and author Nadia Boltzweber. There's a, a little stand that we sometimes pull into the center to either set things on or drape with a cloth. And there's this variety of chairs, which I always think is amusing. Uh, regular green chair from like the hall and a couple of stools for when we've had guest musicians. And then these two very impressive chairs called the pulpit chairs. These are for our special visitors. I back away from them so you can see them. And uh, they have previously sat at the back of the sanctuary, but due to their kind of exquisite uh, in structures, they were brought up here. Now, just beyond those two chairs, there's a curtain. This is not the Wizard of Oz's curtain. This curtain is simply hiding the sound system equipment that's back here. So I'm going to pull it aside, the pull from the middle. So there's a 
uh, lots of equipment that goes into the normal sound system. There's some switches way up there. Not very exciting, but probably an unfamiliar spot. And if I can come over the top of it, we do have a baptismal font. So here's the, this is Conrad A, maybe Henry or Gary, a gift of. So let me back out and let you see that. I'll actually lift the lid. <laughs> see if there's anything in there. Nope. There's the basin of the baptismal font. Or maybe there's something else you could do with water in there. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And of course, what we keep the chalice on for lighting. There's our set of candles. Three tapers on each side. The little candle of, uh, of community welcome and hope right there to light the chalice. And this beautiful carving, the grapes going all the way across for three panels down the sides to the floor. Pretty impressive. And of course, the very, very eye-catching, now that it's afternoon light, you can see our stained glass. Here's the central characters. But there's another piece of uh, the chancel area that we don't always get to see, and that's over here on the south side. So this with love and admiration, this organ is dedicated to the memory of Willi Willard G. Smith, talented musician, loyal friend, devoted member, organist of Troop Memorial Church for 56 years, 1925 to 1980. So if you've never seen that plaque or inscription, here's your close-up. <laughs> and you can see that it's really well protected right now. Everything's covered. But there's the, the organist's bench and a, a light for them to aim at it. I'm not opening that. I don't make enough money. So here is the actual, the pulpit from the speaker's point of view. We've got some leftovers from the last service, candles and matches, and so many light switches for all these different lights above and on the stage. And there's enough space for the pastor to sit down, a old bench at the back of it. And you notice that um, it's raised, so we can make it up to the mic if you're not quite tall enough. But there's one last thing I want to show you besides the sanctuary that we all know and love with its pillars on each side and the uh, posters or, or banners hanging down, the upper, upper most squared off windows. It has to do with the balcony. So I've moved the tripod to the pulpit and I'm standing in the minister's normal spot but really just to show you one thing that you might not get to see on a normal Sunday, and that's above the balcony, there's a window, a small round window, and I'm gonna see how tightly I can get this camera to zoom in on it. So hang on for a second if you get motion sickness. It's almost at the very peak of the, the ceiling. And this window was dedicated, since Troop Church is Troop Memorial Church, the money came from Amos Geiger Troop, the founder. This window is dedicated to his son, George. And it's got some initials up there as well. Um, Amos Troop put it there to commemorate his son, who was a lieutenant in the Civil War. The battles are illustrated on one of the side panels, uh, starting with the Battle of Chicksaw Bayou, which is one of the panels. There's a plaque in the National Battlefield Park at Vicksburg uh, saying at this location, Lieutenant George Troop of the Chicago Mercantile Battery unlimbered his cannon and he died. George died on the 8th of April, just around the corner, 1864, after the Battle of Sabine Crossroads, which is panel eight on that little window. And in the center, the two 
objects are brass cannons, the uh, Amos Troop and the Chicago Episcopalians and Universalists raised the money for the cannons. Even though the Universalists are pacifists, some wars are worth fighting. Young George and several of his comrades were from the Chicago Universalist congregation. And that history was provided to me by Anne Honeywell. Thank you, Anne. Let me try one more layer of zooming in. You can definitely see the cannons in the center. And his initials are right above them. There's the George and the Troop. On a, another tour, I'll uh, take you into Troop Tower and show you how the light bulb got installed not too long ago, thanks to Vahe and Laramie. And uh, I hope this reminded you of the place we all know and love, our church. Here's Troop. And I can't wait to see you sitting in those pews alongside me. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.